eleven disciples proceeded to Galilee, to the mountain which Jesus had designated. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some were doubtful. And Jesus came up and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And lo, I am always with you, even to the end of the age. This is the word of the Lord. Then it was my turn. 
It was not like I liked my job, but it was I had to do. I whipped people. And my three palm from slice his back, blood gushed. I hit him again. I began going, he began going down. I kept on striking him. I had no control over the flogger who used me. It was then I understood that the flogger and I were both being used. He was being used to vent his frustration of, of the high council. I was being used to vent his frustration. But what could I do? Hey, it's a job. A rogue, a sign of an <coughs> isn't for everyone. You have to be some of it. Not just anyone can dress in purple, you know, the color of royalty. I mean, it doesn't look good on everyone. You must have a certain mood to wear it. Imagine that. The soldiers brought me, the scarlet robe, to aid their ridicule of him. How absurd. Imagine using me for something so pretty. But when they draped me on his bloody back, I knew that I was too heavy for him. He even staggered under my weight. I tried to keep my weight off him. What else could I do? And blood. I felt it seep through my fibers. I wonder how I'd ever get clean. Well, all this commotion was going down. While all this commotion was going on, I was being braided into a circular piece of some sort. Now, anyone that knows me knows that all my thorns are the longest and strongest of the thorn field. My thorns do not bend. They are a sturdy root. They are planted on that man's head. What were they being used for? It made no sense to me. My finger of thorn sank into his head and blood gushed. When I felt his skull, I knew this man was in pain. And I was a positive. He closed his eyes and groaned from my skin. Well, this is The skull, that's what they call me. But we need to show the people who's boss I'm the one. I'm where it all ends. Call got them. As they came up my hill, I watched and cried. Three that day. I had not held three crucifixions in quite a while. I was attracting so much attention. This was my day to be known. But when the one in the middle died, everything changed. It got so dark that it looked like the blackest night. The stars ran and the moon hid. I shook so uncontrollably that my trees became loose. Animals fled. People fell, rocks broke, and tombs split open. Never have I witnessed such a people. What a day. My time of recognition turned into a chaotic nightmare. I heard them coming. I didn't know what to believe. There was so much going on that day. I wanted to set Jesus free, but the people insisted that if he did, he was no friend of Caesar's. You know politics. Pilate became disgusted with all it all, and he brought the man here. They call me get, get that. Uh, I am the stone pavement. I am part of the Tower of Athena that borders the northwest corners of the temple complex. I have a beautiful view of the courtyard below, and on that special bench, I am the main seat. Here is your king, Pilate told them. While well, I listened to what the crowd below demanded of Pilate, crucify him, take him away, the people began shouting. Even the chief priest fellow, crucify him. I don't know like, what Jesus was accused of, but he lost. Pilate got in and the man he just stood there quietly. I don't know, it's really not my place to say. I just hear a lot of traffic. <clears throat> Jesus fell under my weight. The soldiers ordered another man to carry me for him, perhaps so they could beat him easier. At the top of Galgotha, they laid him on the ground. They pushed him to the ground and laid him on me. He winced when his raw back touched me. He cried out in pain as if they hammered a spike through his hand into me. He cried out in pain. His flesh fused with my wood and the spike drove through him and then me. 
They, then they hammered another spike into the, uh, his other hand. Then they placed one of his feet on top of the other. A soldier then hammered still another spike down through both of his feet. Ugh, why? They shoved me t into a hole and to stand me, stand us up. My weight sunk into the ground. His skin ripped as his weight fell on the spikes. His bloody back slid down as my splinters gripped his flesh and shredded what was left of his skin. His blood mixed with my oils. He cried out with, as we both hung there together. As we became one, I knew that I was all that Jesus had left. Then they called out to his, then he called out to his father. I didn't see his father, just a few friends and his mother at my feet, my foot. Then the man commanded his spirit to his father. I didn't understand that, but I didn't understand when he said, it is finished, and then he died. I felt so close to him during that short time. Later, the soldiers pulled his lifeless body down. My splinters tore from me and embedded in his back. Then they took him away, and I hung there alone. When they brought him to me, I felt so ashamed. I heard, I had heard what happened at the cross. I was swept in the tomb of a wealthy man, out of some crucified nobody. But when they wrapped him in pure linen, my perspective changed. Joseph R. Mafia carefully laid his body inside me. <coughs> this was a Jewish day of preparation, so I knew that the woman would be around in a few days to anoint his body. I have heard that the soldiers thought that someone may try to take his body, and it was my job to protect his body. The soldiers posted a guard, but I was sorry no one would take him from me. But at some point during the night, something happened. I can't explain. I had no control. My stuff was rolled away. My insides lit up. He got up and left. Two angels stayed behind to explain everything to the woman. I couldn't keep him. He got up. He left. Don't be alarmed. You two are looking for the Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He's not here. He has risen. Come, see where they laid him. Remember how he said while he was in Galilee, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of a sinful man. Be crucified. And on the third day he raised again. And if I be lifted up from earth, I'll draw all men unto me. He has risen, and he sits on the right hand of the Father in heaven. But he's coming back. Watch for him in the clouds. Before he left, he promised that you that another comforter will come. The Holy Spirit will, who, will, who will guide you into all things. Let not your heart be troubled. He has risen. He is not on the cross. He is not in the tomb. But he gave, gave you a commission. Go to all the world and preach the gospel to our little risen Lord, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen, amen, amen.
Please join me in prayer. How often when weary do we sigh? The spirit is willing, but the body is weak. How often when in prayer are thoughts distracted by sounds or circumstance, or prayers diverted by tribal, trivial concerns? Daddy shared it with us rather than left at your feet. How often do we find ourselves apologizing to you for our abbreviated prayer life? And yet you draw us still to be in your presence as you did the disciples at Gethsemane. When you want us to share in your life to play our part, you told your disciples to watch and pray so that they might not fall into temptation. Do you ask the same of us, as, and do we also fail you each time we whisper, The spirit is willing, but the body is weak? Grant us the strength, Lord, of the body and of the spirit, to offer you the sacrifice of our lives. Yes. 